to 24 7 access. Is it okay to plug in over here? Um, somewhere? They're connected to your table. Oh, okay. We'll get started in like five minutes. So we have this amazing network of about 150 network, uh, 150 mentors who volunteer their time every month, sometimes even multiple times a month, to come in, meet with our companies, and provide advice, insight, and connections to our companies so that you know our companies can grow and expand and go on to do all these great and fantastic things. And I recruit, coordinate, and am the main point of contact for all 150 mentors. So 
anything they need at any time of day, mm -hmm. I'm there and I provide it. And a cool thing about Sarah is that she also acts as a matchmaker between our members and mentors. Um, we know that's a huge reason why people join Capital Factory is to get connected to these folks they probably wouldn't get to meet otherwise. So once you're a member, you can get office hours with this woman and mm -hmm. she'll help you navigate who do I meet with. Yeah. So yes, I get to know all of our mentors really personally and I know some of their strengths and some of their weaknesses and the type of people they like to meet with. And so as I get to know you guys and see what your big pain points are or some of the goals you want to accomplish, um, we kind of make a plan and I connect you with those mentors and they can help you get from point A to point B. Arish. Cool. Hi guys, um, I am Arish, the Accelerator Coordinator. Uh, my main role is with the Accelerator and the Venture Fund here at Capital Factory. We actually have a new company sitting up front here in Law Booth. We just got onboarded. What's up, Law Booth? Woo! 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 It's a big deal to get in. Yeah, they're super cool. So the Accelerator program here is for companies ready to scale, and we focus on helping them find uh, clients, employees, investors, and partners. Um, I help with the vetting process of getting companies into the program. I help them get acquainted once they are in the program, and I help them match with um, investors and strategic partners and whatnot, and kind of the due diligence behind the fund. So those are my main roles. Mm -hmm. So everybody get on Arisha's good side. <laughs> cool. Um, there. Before <laughs> we get started, um, this is just a little blurb for you guys to read if you want. Really, this time, um, is an AMA, so the format is Ask Me Anything. I have some points of information to go over with you guys, but really it's gonna be a dialogue. There's not a lot of people here, which is great, so it can kind of be a back and forth. Um, I would love to, to go around the room and see who's here and what you're interested in um, and why you chose to come here today. So if Law Booth, you guys wanna start and we can go around the room, you can just kind of say, my name, this is what I'm doing, and what else? Maybe your role. Mm -hmm. My name is William, CEO of LaBood. We connect clients and attorneys online uh, with scheduling, real-time scheduling and video conferencing. Um, so we just moved to Austin a couple days ago, so I'm really curious about like how to get started, what the mm -hmm. best way to get started and really establish a network and mm -hmm. um, get to know the startup community here in Austin. And I'm really excited for Startup Week next week. So yeah. good timing. Super good timing. Yeah, so I'm Joe Birchard, I'm the project manager over at Law Booth. Um, kind of the same thing that, that Willie's looking for. Just to Joe also needs a girlfriend, so if anyone knows that. <laughs> <laughs> um, that happens here too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd really like to, to kind of get a grasp about the scene here and uh, the best way to get involved in and what the coolest not to miss events are of, of next week. Yeah. Cool. My name is Victor, and I am CTO of Wabooth. And like Willie said, we really try to bridge the legal gap that's existing in our society. And what I'm most curious about is how to, or I, I think mm -hmm. since, because of my role, it would be to tap into the developer community here. Mm -hmm. Because I, I love the approach of the full stack JavaScript. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just curious cool. about that. Awesome. Hi, my name is Matt Roberts and I'm here with Morgan Stanley. I actually am a financial advisor and I've been working with a number of people who are doing startups or are on their second startup. So I'm just trying to figure out what this place is, what mm -hmm. it does, and where the connection points. I'm here with Mike Waugh, who has a great defense application, which you'll hear about in a little bit. Cool. Nice to meet you, Ben. Hi, my name is Brooks Amster. I'm with a uh, company called Divesta Communities. Started in Florida, we now have an office in Texas as well. But uh, we're in real estate and property management, which has almost nothing to do with tech right now. But we're just trying to be innovative and forward thinking and always looking for new opportunities. Since we have an awesome office, we know that, uh, you know, we want to, we think of ourselves as being one of the more innovative uh, investment and property management companies in the space. So I'm really just trying to, you know, expose myself to like minded, or hopefully I'll be like minded eventually, but right now I'm just kind mm -hmm. of a real estate guy. So. Um, yeah, it seemed like a good opportunity to get a feel for what's out there. Awesome. Real quick on that, our largest um, vertical, <clears throat> and Arish, correct me if I'm wrong, is real estate tech. 
It matches with home tech. Yeah. Okay, now it matches. Yeah. Okay, okay, so, but so still, different. one of our largest verticals here is real estate tech. Yeah. yeah. I just had a guest mentor come in. He's kind of like the same boat as you, and he's been in real estate his whole life, and I had him come in just as to give provide insight and all of that. So whether you're not in tech or not, we somehow find a way to incorporate mm-hmm. you into our community. Awesome. Yeah. I'm not completely done for showing up. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never. I'm Aaron Sanchez. I uh, just showed up today in the Duke, but I am working on drone services software. So I'm just really interested in drone services and I'm really interested in virtual reality, which makes the first floor mm-hmm. plan really awesome. Yeah. And I'm really excited for that. Yeah. We're going to have a really sweet VR demo in the VIP lounge. Sweet. October 6th. So get a baller ticket or become a member before then. I'm uh, Mark Beggert. I'm interested in um, finding a, a location to, to network um, and to uh, not only speak to mentors, potential investors, but also uh, the development community as well. Um, the concept that I'm exploring is around solar. It's a sort of consumer-focused application for customer acquisition and, and growing the rooftop solar market. That's awesome. Mike, do you want to go? Yeah, I'm Mike Wall, and um, I originally graduated from the UT, so it's an MSDC program, and we um, had technology called Thorad, Thermal Alpha Radar, and what it does is, um, in terms of thermal anomalies that preclude catastrophic failure, so we read everything electromagnetically, so we don't have to be in one place. We can be in a drone and, and do this, and we can see what happened, and also what happened before it happened. Wow. Because of the thermal gradient de- degradation of, of, of the signal. And then we're, patent, we're finishing the patent on Monday, the, the Thorex patent. Um, and Thorex, um, it's, it, it's just a very uh, interesting way to detect um, large scale crude oil theft in South Texas. There's large scale what that? Pardon? Crude oil. Crude oil. It's over a billion dollars loss. And so all countries came to us and said, well, you can affect our refineries and our power plants. How about can you detect this? And we found out that the cartels are running a lot of the crude oil theft. So we decided to put daily suits on the patent because it's a dollar fine each. So we just made a nice white world hello uh, patent name and we licensed it to somebody and they can shut up. But anyway, it works real well. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> then the images, so they don't know where they're coming from. So they don't know that they're airborne or, or hidden. So it's, it's just using, I'm a former Intel officer, so we're using some, some cool uh, stuff that, uh, operational stuff from, from uh, the intelligence world. Okay. Uh, bend it around, and, and it's all it's all approved, so, it, so they like it, and we like it. That's awesome. Yeah. You, are you connected to Skylabs, Jim Brotherton? I feel like you should yeah. Not. yeah, let's talk after, because I have some cool people that... You know, Inkito. Uh-huh, yeah. and Drilling Info, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, we'll talk after. I have some cool people to introduce you to. Very cool. Uh, hi, I'm Tony Oversted. Um, I'm a business entrepreneur, and I'm currently looking at um, mobile apps and the uptake by consumers and trying to look at opportunities whereby 90% of the use of a mobile phone is on apps and 10% only is on browser and other things. So I'm currently looking at uh, politics, religion, and NGOs, which is about a 300 just in the U.S. Cool. Yeah, so I'm currently exploring, looking for capital. Very cool. Yeah. My name is Caroline Alexander. I've been an entrepreneur for 30 years myself. And I'm starting a new startup uh, called Pray For, which I'm in business with Tony. Um, and we're looking for, t- for capital for our new venture. That's awesome. Super cool. You guys need to talk to a reach after this. Yeah. Cool. Hi. I'm Nick Ezenu. I'm a director of product development for Skin King, which is our uh, swimming pool service giving autonomous robot. And we are here to do development and to find money and do business. Cool. I'm the firmware developer for Skin King. My name is Christian Castillo. And they are also an accelerator program. And are the coolest guys on the block. Cool. Besides Lobby. <laughs> we should hang out. <laughs> we are. Uh, we used to live in Austin uh, about three.
three years ago, and we did startups back then. And it only takes one. <laughs> and one worked. And then we bought a sailboat and went sailing around the Caribbean for the past three years. Awesome. Hey. The dream. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Now we're back. And, uh, what was your startup? Um, you didn't hear of it. <laughs> okay, well, that's okay. Was, uh, we just did um, SEO marketing, oh, a lot cool. of that, and we were selling products. That's awesome. It was, it was not really any particular product per se. Cool. So we were, it was a lot easier, you know, 10 yeah. years ago, right? And there's a lot of competition doing SEO now, so it's... That's awesome. Yeah, it was fun. So you guys are back. Now we're back, and now we're looking again for work, and uh, just, I'm a developer, and she was an IBM tester for um, long time. Yeah. And now we're back just seeing, uh, looking. Yeah, off the sailboat. Yeah, we'll off the sailboat. Yeah, we'll yeah. It's, it's a tough life for you guys, but... <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Welcome back. That's awesome. Very cool. We can start with you. Paula, do you want to start? We can go this way. Sure. My name is Paula Nguyen, and I'm the event operations coordinator here at Capital Factory. I'm in charge of all of the Ask Me Anything, except for two. One is Sarah's in charge of, and um, so how to navigate the center of gravity, and I'm also in charge of intro to the Austin startup scene, which is another AMA, and how to meet investors, um, as well as all of our other events. Um, we also have other co another coordinator for our really big events like Austin Startup Week next week and Startup Crawl and South by Southwest and all that stuff. But if you guys ever want to talk about booking a room and talk about having an event here at Capital Factory, please let me know. And I would love to talk to you guys about it. Riley. I'm Riley. That's my intern, and she's yeah. 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 She's, she's a badass intern. <laughs> she's a badass intern. Killing it. Rest she's on killing her, like, it. third or fourth day, and she's been doing a fantastic yeah. job. I'm just so proud of her. Cool. But I'm, I'll be working with Sarah with um, scheduling and tour, office hours, and other fun stuff like that, events. Cool. Yeah. Great. Um, I probably shouldn't be here. I'm Rick Goldman. I am uh, actually came from out of town. There's a healthcare, very big healthcare conference going on, so I'm in the, on the private equity side. That's awesome. Um, we, I, I sort of have the corporate M&A merchants acquisition side of, of our shop, but I'm looking at developing sort of a healthcare um, uh, innovation fund. And, and you're uh, in the perfect place. <laughs> it, it is. Yeah. You know, it's, it's really a convergence between data and analytics. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm, but you know, my background is I work with health with startups and cool. fashion, food, tech. We have a lot of larger corporate health partners, so right. yeah. Let's uh, let's sync up afterwards. Okay. Yeah, let's sync yeah. up afterwards. Get yeah, in the our um, one of our directors is Millie Price. She is the executive director of innovation at the Dell Medical School. So there's a lot of overlap mm -hmm. between Capital Factory and Health Tech. Yeah, it's big. Um, you know, healthcare 2.0, which is it's just raging right now. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, we're glad that you're here. Well, I'm Daniel Roy Barron, and, and I'm actually running for U.S. President of the United States as a write-in candidate. The bullet, actually, I've been getting write-ins from around the country. Great. And it sounds, for you, it? it sounds like <laughs> unbelievable, but it's actually true. You watched the debate last night. You actually, no, I was actually meeting with community leaders. Um, I was doing something. <laughs> so I'm running as a centrist independent candidate. Yeah. So I still got a month left. Do you have a startup? But yeah, I do have a media company too, but I've been a sociology experiment on myself. Like I like to, you know, really do some things that really make people think and yeah. to not, uh, so I'm into politics, media, but I say media, I'm, I have a, a lot of people on social media, like hundreds of thousands, and I've been doing this a long time. Cool. And doing radio, I've done Voices of Global Freedom radio, and um, a lot of people in my Rolodex that are luminaries in, the, in different fields, so I love Shining a bright light, helping other people rise up. So, yeah, that's awesome. So, yeah, cool. Hey, everyone, I'm Brad. Uh, right now, we're in the planning process. This is Sam, my partner for a veterans nonprofit. Um, kind of a little different than most folks. We're trying to work on things that skills veterans already have instead of trying to, you know, retrain them. So, we're looking in for in the tech industry here for recycling as well as possibly like mental health and using events such as South by Southwest to kind of create coalitions and have, you know, create greater awareness for the veteran community because a lot of their needs aren't being met and government's not doing it, so someone's got to step up to do this. Yeah. 
That's awesome. Cool. That's great. Very cool. Were you on the startup bus? No. No? Okay. I don't know what that is, so no. <laughs> there was a it was the same idea, s- similar idea from what Willie said. But that was, once again, four or five years. Yeah, so my name's Sam. Kind of like he said, um, we really want to do a lot of stuff with nonprofits. Um, but the main thing, like kind of being here, is just to get more information on like the tech side of it. Um, everyone's already using tech for everything else, but it's not being used for like nonprofits. We think um, so. We're just trying to like be the you know the plug for that, I guess, kind of bring it more over that side, so then everybody can benefit from it. So yeah, we had a huge event awesome. um, last week, uh, Impact at the Box Hours. And it kind of brought together the social good nonprofit impact community in Austin. So it definitely exists. Um, so I would definitely uh, encourage kind of getting plugged into that. There's a lot of veterans in that space as well. I think there's a big veteran meetup. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. Comes to, yeah, it comes mm-hmm. to Capital Factory every month. Mm-hmm. Well, we have Bunker, Bunker Labs. Labs. Yeah, Bunker Labs is here. Bunker yeah. Labs, yeah. Yeah, and one of our mentors, Greg Cum- Craig Cummings, is about mm-hmm. to hold a big event for veterans. And mm-hmm. so I've been connecting him. Yeah. With- Yep. Yeah, and the DOD is a member here. Yeah, yeah. now. Yeah. So. That's a big one. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It is. Yeah. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. I heard, oh, right, the Secretary of Defense. Yeah. Is that the, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah that Last one. Yeah. Uh, I'm Jonathan Gleason, I'm CEO of a company called Yogi, and it turns course content into video games. And so, say you're trying to learn accounting 101, you could play against kids in your class and cool. basically play Mario Kart while learning it. Uh, I moved down to Austin like four days ago, mostly because we're targeting college uh, students and there's like 250,000 students within an hour of here. And also trying to work my way into Capital Factory and become a part of that. EdTech is a big part of the system. Very cool. What was your name again? I'm sorry. Jonathan Gleason. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. Cool, well welcome you guys. Um, It's always super interesting to know who's in the room and how we can collaborate. a little bit about Capital Factory before we get started. We were founded in 2008 as an accelerator. The co-working space spun out of that. Um, so we were one of the first co-working spaces to open up in the country and we were the first in Austin. And that's why we have such an established badass network. Really our mission um, not only is to help people quit their jobs and become entrepreneurs, but not just to leave you there once you become an entrepreneur, but to connect you, right? Um, that's my role, that's Sarah's role, that's Arisha's role. Um, every single staff member at Capital Factory, all 25 of us, and our job title is Connector. Um, so we want you to come here. We want you to say, Sarah, who do I need to meet? Liz, who do I need, do I need to meet? Um, so we can better serve you because we know that's how things get done, especially in a city like Austin. So this is our dream team. Um, it's grown a little bit since our Christmas picture last year. Um, But as you get in, um, you'll be working with me on the community engagement team, um, arranged with the accelerator team, and that's what Sarah is on um, as mentor coordinator. She's on the accelerator team as well. Our partnerships team, for those of you in the room who um, are part of a corporate company, their job is to source um, and field inbound um, corporate requests. So we have a lot of really cool corporate partnerships um, right now within Capital Factory, as well as some that are within the works. For example, Condé Nast is a member here. They're launching out of Capital Factory. They have 17 developers here right now. Um, Booz Allen Hamilton is here, Quantcast. Um, they're huge. They all play a huge role in our startup ecosystem because they help um, source talent and technology. So it's really awesome when a corporate company becomes your client. Um, one of those is the DOD. So they're here specifically for that. Um, for sourcing talent and technology. So if you have, Georgia, do you want to come up here? No, I'm good. Okay. (laughs) If you have um, a product or technology um, that the DOD could use, for example, that's a really great connection for you. Um, So a little bit about our memberships. Um, Most of you guys, I actually think all of you guys were on the tour. Was anybody here not on the tour? Okay, cool. 24-7 24-7 access, like we discussed, is $350 a month. That is every single um, perk that we went over. We don't tier benefits. Everybody gets them across the board. A dedicated desk is $600 a month. The difference is co-working is shared space. Dedicated desk is your own desk. Um, 
A huge part of what we do here is community. We have a whole department for that. Last week we took all of our members out on a booth cruise, which was really fun. And a couple weeks we're, ta we're taking everybody out to volunteer in Silker Park. So um, we try to connect you guys as best as possible. We know that's why you're here. So through different means like CF Social Good um, to get you involved in causes that we think are important. Um, like registering you to vote, um, to our daily snack, which is every day at 3 p.m. That's a lot of fun. That's our way of introducing you guys to each other again throughout the day, getting everybody in the kitchen at one time. We do catered breakfast once a week. We do happy hours um, as well. So there's a lot of avenues for you to meet people. And that goes back to all of us having the word connector in our job description. And like I said, I'm kind of going to breeze through these titles because we these um, slides because we went over most of these in the tour, but I want to solidify them a little bit and then we can take some questions. So, do you want to talk about mentor office hours? Yeah. So our mentor office hours are kind of for the CEOs and the founders of the company. Um, with that being said, you know you have someone who works in marketing and they're like, oh, I just want to meet Vera Fisher. Like I really totally connected with her bio. They just let me know and you know I can make it happen I'm not where no one on staff says no really like we have said no in the past but we really try to make uh, accommodate to whatever your needs are but really these office hours you get 30 minute appointments with these mentors and you can in that time give a brief introduction and then talk to them about any questions concerns mm -hmm. something about their bio stuck out and you can just talk mm -hmm. to them about anything and then if the meeting goes well, you know you guys can officially continue that conversation outside of office hours. And yeah. that's something I really try to encourage and facilitate much yeah. deniability. Yeah. And I encourage you guys, because um, I know a lot of you are right now not thinking, do I join Capital Factory? Is this a good fit for me? Go to capitalfactory.com slash incubate slash mentors. Mm -hmm. That's where in our entire Rolodex of mentors are. Um, because I know we talk a big game up here and I want you guys to see it for yourself. So capitalfactor.com slash incubate slash mentors. Um, that's the list of everybody for you guys to go through. Cool. Um, device lab. Do y'all have like yeah. a limit on amount of office hours per week? So. No. So yeah, if you want to just hold off, if you just want to come in and meet with every mentor, then mm -hmm. by all means, go for it. What we really try to do though, like one thing that is really unique about our mentor program is that it is a really high standard and part of that is me being a gatekeeper. So if I notice something like, oh, you've had like 15 office hours, I might check in with you and find if you felt that they've been valuable. Yeah. So you don't want to be, these mentors are only here for two hours and they are really, they want to give back their time and we don't want to waste it. So we always try to like kind of have this like powwow session beforehand saying yeah. like, here like here's why you should meet with this mentor like go into this meeting with these questions because you'll get this out of it okay so Perfect. that's kind of the philosophy we have cool for the CTOs in the room um, we have a very killer device lab on the fifth floor and that we talked about briefly on the tour we um, got the device lab and all I think 56 devices right now because so many of our members were having to buy shady devices from eBay and sometimes they come back working sometimes they don't so we took that hassle away from you we have the devices in-house you just rent them out the way you would a library book and I was told the other day I shouldn't use a library metaphor because not everybody knows what that is anymore um, oh, which, which is super sad <laughs> to be fair I did use it to like a group of like young children and they were like what's a library um, but you guys know, you guys know what libraries are. Um, so that's our model here. Um, and of course, if there's a device that you need that we don't have for whatever reason, just let us know and maybe we can source it for you. So we want to be really helpful. Yeah. I've got like 16 years of IT experience, but one thing I was just curious, this might be too down in the weeds, but do you have some way like you, a person puts the image on it of what they're testing and then you wipe off the image is like a real easy process like super like, easy yeah um we have an amazing it coordinator and he wipes all the devices as they come back mm -hmm. that way they don't get too proud of everybody's beta f's cool um cf studios so we have um a killer studio on the fifth floor and there's a little write-up about them right here but really uh, the studio was built for your benefit. We want you to set yourselves apart in uh, your market by way of awesome content because we know that's what drives sales so often is how cool is your Kickstarter video. Um, 
the headshots for your pitch deck, um, a lot of product shoots happen. We have a really cool fashion tech startup in here that's been using the studio for fashion shoots, essentially, um, which has been really cool to see. Um, some of our corporate companies were using the studio today. I saw like four people just walking around the studio for like an hour today. It was Booz, Am Booz Allen Hamilton and they had um, CF Studios trailing them, filming them the whole time. So a lot of our members use this. We want you guys to be among them. It's a really, really great, valuable resource. Staff members, we get our headshots done there as well, so they're really good. Um, and like I said, they're rented out at highly discounted rates and you just email studios at capitalfactory.com to get connected with them. If you are a non-member, you can use them as well. You just don't get the discounts. And that's the same email, studios at capitalfactory.com. So Accelerator, you wanna talk about this? Oh, I have to pitch it? Okay, cool. Just, right. Yeah, <laughs> just share, just share. Yeah, so the Accelerator program here is really, really awesome. Um, kind of a quick summary, I guess. The typical Accelerator is like a three month boot camp. You get in, you do your work, you get out, do a demo day and pitch to investors, right? Capital Factory is not like that. We just call it an Accelerator because we don't know what else to call it. Um, and so like I said in the beginning, it's for companies who are ready to scale. And instead of putting you through rigorous coursework, we just kind of provide you with the resources and it's up to you to take advantage of them. So a lot of the cool resources are you kind of the cream of the crop. And so whenever Liz brings in a really cool VIP, it's our accelerators that we bring in to pitch to them or like do guest office hours or something. Um, I run CF Studio or CF uh, University. And so we get a lot of really cool speakers to come in and do workshops, panels, um, different speaking engagements. We have Mike Maples, which is like a billionaire, mm -hmm. one of the first investors in Twitter. He's coming in a few weeks. Um, so there's that. And then um, there is our venture fund that invests in those companies, and I also help bring that in as well. And we're strictly on the accelerator companies. Um, I could go on and on, but that's kind of the, the short snapshot of the program. Yeah. Do you want to talk about some of our success stories? Yeah. Um, so our very first company that ever got in is called Sparefoot, and they are kind of the Airbnb to the self-storage industry. They are the largest marketplace for the self-storage industry. They have over $60 million of funding. I think they're over 200 employees now. And it was two undergrads from UCLA, came to Austin. They were like, we have this awesome idea. Let's go pitch it. And they hooked up with Josh uh, and then started it. And then the rest is history. Um, another cool company is CrateJoy. And they are one of the first online subscription marketplaces. And so things like Sock of, Sock of the Month Club or like Dollar Shave Club, all those are hosted on CrateJoy. Um, and they are over $10 million in funding, I think. And a lot of employees already lost count. And so um, they're doing great. They're actually down the street, um, office out, and Amir, the CEO, is here all the time. Um, mm -hmm. There's a million. We have over 120 active companies, so I could go down the list. But those yeah. are kind of the, the two of my favorites. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so those are other growing companies. Um, startup Crawl. Um, Has anyone here attended Startup Crawl before? Aaron, right? Yes. Aaron has? Cool. Um, yeah, you liked it? I did, yeah. I've been a couple times. Oh, times. very cool. Yeah, you're a veteran. Um, so think of the startup crawl like a pub crawl. Rather than um, going from bar to bar, we send our 10,000 plus attendees from tech company to tech company. Um, and this is our way of getting the Austin community engaged in what tech is doing, as well as connecting um, those that are already in tech with the right startups and investors, um, future employees, customers, things like that. We want everybody uh, to get to know each other and conglomerate in one super fun way. So that is October 6th. Um, we have some really cool host stops lined up. Um, ATXstartupcrawl.com is where you go to register. It's totally free. Um, register for however many people as you can get to come and we are once again the VIP lounge for that so if you would like access to the VIP lounge you can talk to me after I'll hook you up with a VIP wristband um, right now they're hundred dollars if you are a member they are free so yeah pretty crazy <laughs> pretty crazy and if you are a startup I think there are a couple tables left just a few just a few tables Grab left as you can. yeah <laughs> yeah the table which is really cool and we can go more in depth in a little bit yeah. how so, much are those tables 
Um, because it's so late in the game, I think they're 500. Okay. For members, are typically 300. Okay. But right now, they're 500. Cool. So that is our comprehensive overview of Capital Factory. So now it's your turn. So who has questions? So I'm sure you have a lot. Yeah. I, I was just taking notes of yeah. like all the kind of like the high level uh, area. So is that 350? Do you have to sign up for a certain amount of months, or is it just month to month? It is month to month. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that is that the only price point plan that you have? So $350 is 24/7 okay. um, for co-working. A dedicated uh -huh. desk is $600. Oh, uh, okay. And an office it starts at $2,100. Mm -hmm. Is that three hundred? So, oh, sorry, three fifty per company, or is that per person? Per person. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's twenty one hundred a, a month for an office. Mm -hmm. Do you help navigate that transition from like mentor to investor? I mean, how does that? You know, like you actually, I, I love the idea. I work. How, how does that happen? From mentor to investor. Yeah. Yeah. You can be both at the same time, but I'll let Sarah talk about it. Yeah, you can definitely be both at the same time. And I mean, that's kind of like the... But it's an awkward situation, so how do you, you know, you want to help them, but at some point... Mm -hmm. You, you want to become like their investor? Correct. Yeah, so we are, we're kind of addressing that in different situations. We're working on creating something called investor office hours right now, which is really designed to be the investor comes in with the intent of investing, not necessarily that day, but of like, I'm seriously interested in this company because of X, Y, Z reason. And so it would be kind of a transition of you moving from that calendar to the investor's office hours. But really what all of us here have found with um, like our experience of talking to the investors and talking to the company is people generally invest in their friends. Like they invest in people they want to be friends with, who they care right. about, who like, oh, I saw you start here and then you went and did this. And it's just, it's been so great watching you grow. And then, you know, you eventually become an investor. And so that's really building off that relationship. And we're here to facilitate that relationship in any way possible, whether that's holding office hours, connecting you outside of office hours, anything like that. So you said it exactly right. You know, people invest in people and, and friends. Yeah. But it's a, it's a hard transition. It is a really hard transition. And sometimes that transition really just comes from having office hours. I mean, I know some companies that have met with one mentor like five or six times just building that relationship and every time they address a different pain point and they show progress and they do stuff like that and that relationship grows and progresses on its own. It's a very common thing for mentors to invest. Yeah. Um, one of our, uh, so one of the contingencies with the fund is an accelerator company has to get two of our partners um, or mentors to invest before we invest. Oh, that's and so it's a really cool vetting process. And mm -hmm. so it's definitely, I mean, mm -hmm. it's a common so you, thing. That's why we're trying to kind of focus the whole calendar around it to make yeah. it a more efficient process. And that is for so, accelerator companies. For accelerator, for accelerator, accelerator, accelerator companies. Accelerator companies. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, so and it is um, only a certain, of our 150 mentors, only 13 of them are partners. And so. I thought it was more than 30. But like 30 something. It's not 30. Is it 30? It okay. is 30. Is 13 30? are partners in Capital Factory properties. Oh, maybe that's where I was yeah. thinking. Yeah. 30 are in okay, 30 are, yeah, so 30 are partners. <laughs> and so it's not even that all of our mentors are, like all of our mentors can definitely invest in which companies they want individually. Individual, but, but if you get fun. those 30, if you get two of those 30 to invest in your company and then you get matched, matched funding from Capital Factory. Um, if you if you have someone here um, on the 350 fee schedule, uh -huh. can, they, can your company get mail here too? And of course they can. Okay, so not. Yeah, yeah. We really um, so on your point with the mail, Capital Factory. I want you guys to think of it like this is your office space. Like you take conference room hours here. Like you interview employees here and pitch investors. Like whatever you would do in your office space, this is your office space. Except it's way cooler and it has a gym and a pool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how does uh, somebody who wants to be here connect with somebody who's already here, like a Department of Defense or Condé Nast or some of these other names mm -hmm. you mentioned? Yeah. Um, typically, um, you would become a member. That's really how we facilitate uh, those introductions. Um, if you aren't interested in being a member, then I suggest just coming to a lot of events like this. Same question is, how do you guys make your money? I know you charge rent. It sounds like you're partners yeah. in some of the deals. I mean, could you sort totally. of that? How are we paid? <laughs> yeah, totally. 
Um, I compare Capital Factory to that of a gym um, in the way like we keep our lights on with membership fees and we charge everybody month to month. We drop them the first of every month um, until they tell us not to, so exactly like a gym. And we also have some really awesome partnerships and sponsorships and that's extra. And Georgia, you can add. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I know kind of on that note, um, Galvanize, you guys are familiar with Galvanize. Mm -hmm. We're they good make, friends with them. Yeah, they yeah. make like, I think it's like 80% or something of their revenues from their coding academy. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of the same thing with you guys? Or are you guys more membership focused? Yeah, so Galvanize, um, love them. My yeah. good friend works they're there. Good. Yeah, they're very education focused. Right. Um, we do not have coding schools. Maker Square and Austin oh, Coding okay. Academy. They are members. They're just oh, larger okay. members. Yeah. It's a different model. So mm -hmm. yeah. It's a totally Our different model. Is Our revenue, cool. you know, 90% is from co working. It's from memberships, it's from office sales, mm -hmm. cool. some events, and then sponsors. Mm -hmm. right. They are primarily a coding school that has office space. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yep. Yeah. By the way, that's Georgia, the director of properties here. Oh, I thought so. I introduced you. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm yeah. funny. Actually. That's my boss. Yeah. I saw her hand go up over here. Yeah. yeah. The accelerator program, uh, do you have to be post revenue or pre revenue? What, what are the kind of the qualification um, criteria? We have this thing called accepted for awesome. And so if you're really awesome, it doesn't really matter. Um, we, it really depends on the company. We like to see post revenue. Um, but if you're pre revenue and you have a lot of traction to justify that you're ready to scale, that's cool too. Um, it's kind of a company by company basis. So, yeah. Cool. This yeah. is a kind of a large question, but I, well, I, used, I have a friend who started one of the original in Austin like 2008. Um, <clears throat> now it's ballooned up to like 46. Co working cool. in Austin is like really taken off. Yeah. So, what differentiates uh, Capital Factory from the other 46? Yeah. I love this question. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we are a startup ecosystem. We are not just a co-working space. Co-working is a large part of what we do, but we are so much more. I tell people all the time, because I primarily do a lot of sales here, if you're looking for a nice place to throw your laptop down and crank it out, maybe, I mean, there are so many other awesome co-working spaces. We are a place you go to grow and to grow your business, essentially. Um, because we have the mentor network, we have the device lab, we have the studios. Um, we are filled with amazing people that can help you grow and that can help connect you. Our goal is to introduce you to your first mentor and investor and customer um, and employee. So that's what we're focused on. We're focused on helping you quit your job and becoming an entrepreneur and then getting you to that next level through the different tools and resources that we give you. There's a really cool saying that we use that uh, Capital Factory is Austin's center of gravity, mm -hmm. and that's like true and true to the word. Mm -hmm. um, there's a bunch of people, a bunch of mentors here associated with a lot of other societies and programs and whatnot, but they're all kind of drawn back to Capital Factory. Mm -hmm. There's so many people that are yeah. coming out of the space, it's really, really hard for you not to find a really cool person, whether it's an employee, partner, investor, yeah. partner, um, strategic partner. But yeah, yeah. so that's. And along with that, I will keep yeah. going back to my gym analogy. Um, <laughs> In the same way that if I have a gym membership, that does not make me healthy. If you have a Capital Factory membership, that does not guarantee that you will be successful. In order for me to be healthy, I have to go to the gym and I have to meet with trainers and I have to use the equipment and I have to show up and work really hard. Same thing with Capital Factory. You need to come here, meet with mentors, go to events, introduce yourself to the people sitting next to you, ask a staff member or me for you know help connecting you to somebody and take advantage of everything that's here. Um, one thing I found, our only unhappy members are the ones who don't show up. So, yeah. Any other questions? Just yeah. one, have you guys uh, dealt with franchise, with people that want to make a franchise? Um, we were pretty committed to Austin. Um, I don't think we'll ever be doing that, no. But we the cool, not yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the cool thing is that you know, we run into that problem because so many of our members travel. So we are now part of the Google Hub for Entrepreneurs as well as the Startup Federation. So even though there's only one Capital Factory in Austin, if you are a member of Capital Factory, you can co-work essentially anywhere in the world for free for a couple of days a month. So we have, so we're partnered, for example, because of the Google Hub for Entrepreneurs, um, 1776 is an awesome co-working space in DC. We have a lot of members that go to DC, so they get a free membership there. I was in Madrid this summer. I got to co-work in Madrid for free. So.
So wherever you're going, there's probably a sweet working space for you to get in for free. <laughs> Other questions? Cool. Did we answer all of them? It never happens. Oh, yeah. How, how long is the onboarding process? Say, like, tomorrow yeah. I were to come in and yeah. say I want to be a part of it. Yeah. Um, great question. Um, the onboarding process to be a member, um, first you have to apply. Um, we can get you approved very quickly. The only criteria to be a co-working member, I'm not talking about the accelerator, I'm talking about co-working, to be a member, getting a co-working membership desk or office, is that you are in tech. Um, so you apply, you show us that you are in tech, we can accept you immediately, um, then you just set up your account. So it's super simple. Okay, so yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And for everybody who's in this room right now, I know that you signed in at the front desk um, on the Eventbrite, which is awesome. But if you could also sign in on an iPad by the front desk, um, if you are not a member, because that would give me your email address and I could email you guys a list of resources that we just talked about, like the application. And that's capitalfactory.com slash Berg slash apply. Cool. Cool. Uh, so you were saying 350 a month, uh, and then the, what was the 600 a month? That's for a dedicated desk. Oh, okay. So that's your own desk compared to shared space. So it's really personal preference. And co-working gets five hours of conference room <coughs> usage to spend each month. Dedicated desks get 10 hours each month. How many hours do you accelerate your conference? How many what? For conference room? No, I'm just kidding. Every person like, Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Every person on your team gets 10 hours. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's perfect. Cool. You said one uh, dedicated desk, how many hours a month? 10 hours. Okay. Mm -hmm. What do you need 11? Um, for dedicated desks, that extra hour is $10 extra. Okay. For co working, it's $20 extra. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. What's the split between um, business pay? Say that question one more time. What's the split between your members? Oh, yeah, yeah. The techies versus business people? 20% corporate. We just did the math. I think it's around huh. 18 or 19% right now is corporate and 80% uh, for tech startups. And how of those tech startups are most members developers and technical staff or are they business people? Um, so I don't know the exact number. I would say developers. I, we have less developers than I think we would, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. um, maybe because the space is so vibrant and loud and busy and people coming and going. Mm -hmm. If you need a really quiet place, usually mm -hmm. they go down to the floor and have an office. Mm -hmm. People up here are usually more collaborating. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. Fifth, the, most of our developers are, that are freelancers are on the fifth floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and if you're, let's say, on the business side and you're looking for a developer, we have a lot of really awesome resources to direct you to meet those people. Um, an awesome thing is that we are home to pretty much every developer meetup in Austin, whether that's Latina hackers to iOS developers meetup um, to Pi ladies, so women who code in Python, um, all of those meet up here. So you as an employer can just say, like, oh, I need Ruby on Rails. You can, we can send you to the Ruby on Rails meetup to meet those people, even if they're not members. I would say most of the people out co working are founders mm -hmm. um, that are looking for their first investor, more so mm -hmm. than developers. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. I feel like this was very helpful. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> this was really great for you guys. Cool. Um, well, thank you guys so much for coming. Arij and Sarah and I are going to stick around here. Um, we will talk with you, answer any more questions that you have. I want to be really respectful of your time because I know it's rush hour and you guys need to go home to your families and eat dinner. But thank you again for coming. Um, quick note, ATX Startup Crawl is next week. Please sign up. Um, it'll be so much fun. Bring everybody you know. Um, and hopefully we will see you guys there. So thanks for coming.
You guys are dismissed. <laughs> We're going to be super serious. Obviously, I'm in my sweatpants today. <laughs> you have no problem with this guy not being serious. Are you wearing a suit? Well, you know, I'm actually in the same place. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And there's a word I saw. It's like S Y L P H silk. It means a young, elegant. I just I had to. Oh my gosh! Now he really needs to come here. You have one. You're in. You're approved. Okay. I like it. Do you have it's like a younger milk. I don't know that. Oh my gosh, I love the baby boy. Oh, but my name is Caroline. The DOD. You email me. Email me. Shut up. I love the beach boy. That's me. Oh my gosh. What are you starting? So, yeah. Well, I tell people that my hands are like my like weapon of defense. So I get my nails sharpened here, so they're like, like they can like draw blood. Yeah.